Hey artists, we're gonna go ahead and paint our Santa in a truck door hanger. Um, and the first thing I wanna mention is that um, with your Santa having so many pieces on it, it's really important that the back background gets glued down and is nice and um, adhered to your background before you start gluing all of these um, loose pieces on. That's because as the wood um, and the glue cure together, it can kind of distort a little bit or um, what warp maybe is a good word, but um, it's slightly shrink or what have you. So it's really important um, in order to prevent this piece from becoming distorted that it is anchored really well. So the overview, paint your background, paint the backer, your truck backer, and then, um, you'll paint your little pieces and add them to this piece at the end. Um, so that's the kind of overview. And okay, so with your light blue paint, what you wanna do is, um, as usual, you're just going to lay down your paint and you guys received real light blue colors. Um, I am going to mix some of a little bit brighter blue and some white together. Feel free to add white to yours for kind of a sky sky cloud look. We're gonna add some snow. Um, you do need a little bit of water. And if you wanna kind of tune out for a little bit while you paint your background, um, what you're gonna do is just paint your background with your blue. And for the snow, you'll add white to your bristles just a little bit with some water. And then you'll take and just kind of squirt, or you can go outside and do like a full splatter where you um, actually like fling <laughs> with some force um, white paint onto your board and it's gonna create sort of a snowy effect and adding that water to it is gonna make it um, be different translucency so some snow will look closer and further so it's a really neat technique to use to create snow and then we'll use the um you received a little bottle of puffy paint so we'll use a little bottle of puffy paint to make some sort of more dimensional snow that is completely opaque um, so we'll go ahead and get started Okay, so we're gonna give that just a little bit of time to dry. And I'm going to, as um, I mentioned, you're gonna want a little bit of water. So I'm gonna get some of that blue paint out of this brush, but when we do the snow, I'm, it's not that big of a deal if there is um, a little bit of blue in it, uh, but just you wanna rinse that out. And I'm gonna use this same uh, water to dampen my bristles when I do the snow effect. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to paint the background of the truck. Okay, so on your background, everything is going to be covered except for the tree the truck and the tires. Everything else has a dimensional piece that covers it. So we're going to start with the red on the truck. And um, the other thing that I would mention is other than this piece right here, you don't have to worry about staying in the lines for anything. Um, because everything, like if you got red inside of here, we're gonna cover this up with, with a silver piece. Oh my gosh. All right. So you can use a wedge for this part. I'm going to use this brush just because I'm going to use it to uh, line those edges, but a wedge would work just as well. Like I mentioned, staying in the lines really doesn't matter. In fact, going over the lines a little bit um, might help in case you don't get the, the top piece put on perfectly. It's going to make it blend in. You know, you won't see a wood peeking out from behind you'll still it'll still look red and you won't be able to tell that uh it didn't get lined up perfectly so 
Once I've got this kind of lined out, I will use a wedge to fill in the rest. Just makes the process go a little bit faster. Okay, so over here, you just want to make sure your brush is well saturated and run it right along the edge of that tree line. Okay, so that is good. Switch to my wedge. If this is the first time you're watching um, one of these tutorials, your wedges are nice and clean. Mine are <laughs> used. They're, I wash them because um, before all of the craziness that is the supply chain right now, uh, a pack of 32 of these wedges was right under $8. Now a pack of 32 of these wedges, last time I looked, was $47. So. Um, they are pricey and I'm picky about wedges. There are some, like you can get these, they're just makeup wedges. You can get them at the dollar store, um, but those fall apart. They leave like little balls of foam in your pieces. Um, the wedges that I get are bouncy and they hold paint and they come back, you know, they don't uh, fall apart on you. You can use them over and over again. Um, so they're, they're good quality. Um, If I used a new one every single time, I would be spending a small fortune on these, so I wash and reuse them. As I've mentioned before, there are some colors that tend to require, not require, but do better with a second coat. Um, and you want to do light coats, you don't want to have gloppy paint on your pieces. So do your first coat of red, um, then move on to some of the other pieces. And if you're not a fan of the translucency, just come back and add one, add another light coat on top um, and it'll look, it'll look nice. Um, and again, we don't uh, strive for perfection. Um, I like to, when I'm doing the snow on this piece, I'm going to kind of distress the truck a little bit with the white paint. So um, I'm gonna call that good and move on. I'm gonna go ahead and do the, um, black in the tires and the reason for that is um, you received a dark green and a light green when we do the tree um, i like to add some dimension by having the dark green and the light green so with the black a little bit mixed in it's just going to add one other uh, sort of dimension to it and look really nice so i'm just going to clean out the brush i was just using for red So I've rinsed out this brush. I'm just going to get it dried off a little bit. And for my tires, again, um, all of the lines that you see etched on there are going to be covered up by a three-dimensional piece. So we're not super concerned with staying in the lines, just getting that smooth, even coat um, on our piece. And I have a stray hair situation here. Okay. Okay, so I've got my three tires done. Um, so we'll move on to the tree. I did rinse out my brush, even though really I didn't need to rinse it out too much. Um, Okay, so um, starting with the tree, you want to start with, um, I'm going to start with my light green just a little bit. And you can lay, you can use your wedge to lay down your first coat. Um, I'm not going to because I just kind of like the um, having thicker paint move around to make sort of dimensional um, strokes. So the whole time I'm going to paint this, I'm going to use my paintbrush in the direction that branches would be going um, and sort of leaving, you know, uh, heavy paint lines down. Uh, that will take a little bit of time to dry, but I think it just adds um, some character to not have uh, just a flat green tree. So I just, I did some light green and some dark green down 
And I'm just going to use these wisping motions all the way. Okay, when you get down to this bottom piece where it meets the truck, again, just make sure your brush is well saturated, which it should be, um, and run your, the edge of your brush right along that, right along this line here. So my brush has a good amount of paint in it, and I just carefully run it right along that edge. And I'm gonna avoid that area from here on out. I've gotten the line just how I want it. So. Um, I'm just gonna work on the rest of the tree up close. Hopefully you can see that it's got quite a bit of paint. Um, and I'm just gonna keep working until I'm happy with the way that those strokes are lying. Um, and uh, we'll add in, you can add in some, some more dark green, uh, and then we will add white onto the tips for uh, kind of a snow effect. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to add just a little bit of black here and there for some uh, little bit of extra dimension in here. Really um, light, small strokes. And I'm just trying to accent those wispy um, motions that I was using with the black. So that's really it for the background. Our um, our circle, our round, should have had a good chance to dry at this point. Um, I'm gonna just go over this once more. My wedge still has a good amount of red in it, so I'm just gonna do a quick. I'm going to set that off to the side and for our snow, um, like I said, we're going to use our Jake paintbrush and some white paint. So you do want your brush to be a little bit wet so that your white paint will um, splatter out. All right, so you can use the inside of your box. I'm going to use just this little piece of um, parchment paper. And I'm going to dab my bristles into here, just the ends. You can see that some of that blue is getting into there, and that is fine. Um, you, want, you want that wet sort of look. Um, okay, and then so to add those that snow, it's just a splatter effect. I will say I I I like the I like going outside <laughs> and really splattering it. So I'll put it out in the yard and I will just take my paintbrush and throw, you know, in a very strong, swift motion, um, throw paint onto my board. Let's see if I can get kind of that whoop effect here. Okay, um, that's why you do it out outside. Uh, okay. Let me, I'm going to work this in just with another wedge real quick because I do not like how that came out. Okay. Okay, so if outside just isn't an option, these are the sort of um, snow dots that you're gonna get. Um, I did have my paintbrush drip water onto my board, which is not ideal, but um, I kind of worked it in and we are gonna use um, puffy paint on top to add some more dimensional uh, snow. So I will take that opportunity to uh, use 
a generous amount of this puffy paint. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want puffy paint under my snowman. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, under my Santa. Take your Santa, assuming it has had time to dry. Uh, if you're, if at this point your items are still wet um, and you want to move on to painting and give your pieces some time to dry, just maintain that um, time to allow the background, this Santa background to adhere before you glue your pieces on. So because my background is still kind of wet and my tree is still wet, I'm gonna go ahead and just give them an opportunity to dry while I do those. But ultimately I'm gonna glue this down, allow it to sit um, and adhere for, I mean, a while, <laughs> uh, two-ish hours. Um, and then I will come back and glue my Santa pieces on top. Okay, I went ahead and took it outside and did the uh, splatter paint technique. Um, this is the difference. It's a, it's night and day difference. So I really, if you can make this happen, I think this is definitely the best look. Um, you'll notice lots of variation in the sizes and the um, translucency of the of the snow that we've done here. So. Um, if you live in an apartment or something and just can't make it happen, just practice some on a piece of paper making um, those splatters because what you don't want is like real thin streaks of splatter. So um, if you can get outside and do it this way, that's definitely preferred. Um, so I'm going to set this aside to dry. And we will move on to the rest of our pieces. Um, so... I'm going to set, like always, I'm going to separate everything out by color. Um, so the, this is his little hat. The biggest circle is his hat pom-pom. Um, and then you have two, you want to be careful with your wheels and your headlights because the, um, they're two different sizes to kind of give that, uh, effect of one end of the truck being closer than the other. So just pay close attention to that. But the, these are also, the wheels are also going to be silver um, and the fender. And then these will be that creamy yellow color that you received. Those two are white. I'm going to leave Santa's face just like this. I'm not going to paint it at all. Um, up to you if you want to paint it that's fine I will say um, you got a tiny bit of pink and so we I just added a little bit of pink to my thumb and we'll do little pink on his cheeks and a little bit on his nose um, okay so then this is these are black and then his uh, this is red and his beard we're gonna do white and black mixed together to get it gray and just like we did on the tree we're going to use our brush in strokes just the way that hair grows in the same way that we did the tree and the way that the branches would go. Um, so let's start with, um, go ahead and start with your white. So using one of your wedges, um, I'm going to go ahead and paint these white. For those of you who are anxious to see what puffy paint <laughs> is all about, we will go ahead and use some um, on the hat and the little palm for his hat. Um, and all puffy paint does is add some dimension. Um, so what I like to do on these, so I don't want those lines, I want this to be, this is, you know, normally furry. Um, so. You prefer those little dab marks as opposed to clean lines. Okay, um, so I just am going to take this, prime it. So when I say prime it, I just mean make sure that the paint is coming out of the tip. And I'm just going to make you know, the little cloud motion around the edge. And then I'm going to do one more on the inside, prime it again. Okay, and 
that's all for that. I'm going to do the same thing on his palm, just in obviously a smaller version of that. Okay. And that's that. Um, simple, easy, but adds uh, just cute character to your to your finished pieces. So I will go ahead and do the um, do his beard now. Okay, so I have the white out already. That's why we're gonna go ahead and do the beard. I'm gonna start with the wedge and then I'll move on to using the brush. Um, and I'm just gonna lay down one coat of the white. Since we're not, I'm doing this because we're not using in the, the green we put on really, really thick. Um, so I did not think that a base coat was needed. Um, the beard, we're not going to put streaks in it quite as thick as we did the, um, the tree. I'm going to make sure that my paintbrush is nice and clean before I start so his beard doesn't turn green. So when you're doing your beard, um, have your white and your black out and just start with a little bit of black in your brush and swipe into your white and kind of make it a gray um, but you don't want to make it all gray because you still want it to have those uh, streaks of each kind of darker lighter throughout so um, and then just do your strokes the same way that a beard would grow you'll blend all of it together as you go and then at the end so like this went from kind of a gray to more of a white it's fine um, i'm going to go over this a few times adding different colors as i go some you know um, until i'm happy with the way that it looks so um i would say just keep moving get your first coat down and then go into areas and add more of a color that's too light, you know, more more white if it's too dark and more gray if it's too, too white and kind of go from there. I'm doing sort of a small version of that just to show. So here you can see that where this was darker gray. As I just add a little bit more white to it, it lightens it up and blends it down into the rest of the beard. So, yes, you can decide how salt and pepper you would like for your Santa to be. Okay, for the mustache, um, oh, I got his nose, a little black paint on his nose. Okay, just going to wipe that out. Okay, when you do the beard, do the mustache, I'm sorry. Um, just like we did the beard, the direction that hair would grow, or facial hair would grow. Um, I like to do the mustache in sort of longer strokes. And you, I mean, you'll mix in some shorter ones. Um, but those longer strokes are more characteristic of a, of a mustache. Okay. 
coming in and kind of roughing up these real smooth straight lines because um, that's not very characteristic of like coarse hair in a beard so um, or coarse facial hair so this is where I am and I'm pretty happy with it I'm gonna call it quits and then when I get it all down um, I can add anything that I feel like needs a little extra or blend anything that's too same thing over here I'm just kind of blending some of these areas that A little bit more perfect than what facial hair would normally be. Um, so there we have it. Uh, before we do our silver, I'm just going to add that tiny bit of pink that I was talking about. So uh, I just take and put a little bit of pink on my thumb here and kind of work it in like that. You could use the corner of your wedge if you wanted um, for some reason. I just like the way that the paint lies when I use my thumb. And I'm going to do the same for his nose. Okay. I'm going to work that in a little bit. You can use a rag or just a... Um, use an edge of a baby wipe. So his nose is not quite as pink as his cheeks. Okay. So putting him together a little bit. All right, there's that. Okay, um, also you have his little eyes. So while I have my black paint out, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the other end of one of my wedges. A little bit of black paint. These are teeny tiny, so swipe that black paint onto eyes and that's done and then I'm going to move on to my red this hat is red so you just work some paint into your wedge or you can put it directly onto your piece just a reminder um, you never want to bring your wedge or your brush into your piece um, over the edge you're going to leave a gloppy paint streak on the side or paint and glop drip on the side of your piece so always um, swipe over the edge so that you're not wiping off your paint on your edge and that's going to give you a nice clean edge okay, done with that all we have left to do is the yellow and the metallic Oh, you know what? No, that's right. Metallic. Okay. Using another edge of one of my wedges. Last but not least, we're going to do our silver and um, then we'll be done with um, painting the pieces and we'll just have to assemble everything and then we'll add some more puffy paint details. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put this together a little bit to show sort of the accents that um, I would add and give it, I'm still gonna give mine some more time to dry, but we will continue with the video um, and just add the accents as it is. Okay, so um, 
when you're gluing your back piece down like i said make sure that it's dry if you need to add some weight to the tree um, or to the top of the santa you know just make sure that it's really making good contact with the whole backboard um, place it you know however you would like um, I, I center his nose in between the two holes up at the top um, but you can do it however you want if you want him kind of driving off or whatever um, so leave it to dry you're going to use your e6000 so put down your e6000 and then do dabs of your super glue in spots where there's no e6000 um, and then put put a little bit of weight on top of there uh, to get it to give it a chance to really get good contact in it and adhere um, once this is perfect you know really really secure, secure adhered um, go ahead and glue these pieces down again e6000 dabs of super glue um, and hold it all on. We already did the puffy paint on his hat, um, or the white part of his hat. I'm going to continue that into the red part of his hat. And I'm just going to do a quick outline. You can also do this with a paintbrush. That's normally what we do. Um, with black and white uh, is normally what the, in past boxes, the colors that we've used. Okay, so prime your puffy paint. Make sure you're it's at that tip for you. And then um, just fast motion, squeezing along the way. If it makes those little um, like dash marks almost, it's fine. It doesn't have to be a thick solid line. Um, it can kind of look like stitching. Um, it's just adding character. Okay, so again, um, these are going to be pretty secure. You can just do one little dab of super glue on the inside, on the bottom of the eyes, and then drop those right in. Um, as I mentioned before, make sure you've got the right size headlights. There we go. So the front is going to be bigger, the back is smaller. One thing I would mention, the silver paint, when you start out, looks like it's going to be real translucent, um, but just go with it. Uh, once it dries, it you get a lot more opacity from it. So. Um, all right, so at this point, what I like to do is using the large paintbrush that you had before, which I took outside to use splatter paint. <laughs> okay, so I have gone ahead and allowed my piece to dry, glued it all down. Um, and this is when I'm gonna add my accents. Okay, so I've just dabbed the tips of my brush into the white paint, and I'm going to make it look like Santa's driving through snow. So I'm just starting down here, um, kind of at the bottom where the paint, where the snow would be dense, is where I'm going to start when I have um, just dipped my brush. Sorry, I keep hitting the tripod face. Um, and then as the paint, as I use it up, I'll I'll move up because um, this, you know, the. the Top part is going to be fluffy and then we're just going to add some accents throughout with um with that lighter paint so i'm going to get some paint on his wheels tires i mean and on um kind of the front of the truck where you know if you were driving through snow what would i don't know anything about that i live in houston um, but i imagine that when you drive through snow it gets on It's up to you how much sort of snow you put underneath his truck. Um, I've been doing it kind of like he's coming down a road, so I kind of put it all the way up to here. Um, for texture, you want to kind of make sure that you maintain, you don't do any swiping, um, just that, just these dabs. So how 
much and where you do you do these accents is completely up to you. Uh, I'm kind of just imagining if you know snow is hitting a vehicle how it would be dropping um, and so that's why I have more kind of up here on the front. Spewing out the back. Okay, I'm gonna do a few swipes just to give the truck a little bit of some, a little bit of character. I like to do it around these, I like to run my brush over these areas because the, those edges are gonna pick up a little bit more, give it a little bit of definition. see how it's picking up a little bit more paint on those ridges and I have worked almost all the paint out of my brush as I'm doing this so there's no um, like thick Moving on to my tree, which still is a little bit wet. Um, I'm just gonna add, just like we did the snow at the bottom, just gonna add snow to the tips of the tree. Around those edges. with that. Uh, I think I'm going to do just a little bit of a accent on the front of the lights up here. Just a quick little swoop. Okay, now for the puffy paint. Um, the little bottles you guys received so we'll have plenty. Um, again, prime the tip of your paint and then just however you feel like it, um, add those dots of the paint all around. You kind of want it to have that um, peak on it. When I say peak, I'm talking about when you dab down and I lift up and it's got that little point at the end. I have painted this sign several times. It's been a pretty popular one. And um, some of my Santas are in snow flurries and some are in blizzards. Um, so just... Okay, that's that for now. Um, I just want to point out that the difference that you can see in um, the different ways that we did snow. So between the splatter and the uh, puffy paint, uh, it really adds some dimension and character. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed this project. I'm going to do the bow in a separate little video um, because the bow that we're, we're doing this time is a little bit different. If you like the strip bow that we've done in the past, by all means, go. you probably want to shorten your strips a little bit and um, dovetail the ends. So that means just fold it in half and cut into the, into the uh, wire. But um, we're going to do a rounded bow this time. So um, if that's your thing, then look for the bow tutorial in a separate video. Thanks guys, happy painting.